What's up, all my friends? I am working on the next iteration of my Steel String Singer number two project. Um, a very generous contributor, Irwin, on the Amp Garage is lending his hand in, with his expertise of PCB design. And he's uh, these are prototypes, not available yet. We're still working out the details, how we can make this available to the do-it-yourself community. Um, but I'm... I, you know, acquired a few of them. So we're going to be testing them out and I'm going to verify that it all works. Um, right. Because COVID-19, why not? Uh, as you see here, uh, the boards are basically going to be laid out exactly the same, but with the additive of, um, these boards are going to be one for one layout of the original steel string singer. Now, that's really cool. I think that's super cool to me. That's one thing that I was sort of bugging me about this layout. But the way that this layout is uh, designed that I went for, it was optimizing for eyelets and uh, cost, right? Because if I was to make um, jump, see these little tiny jumpers everywhere just to get the same sort of effect so all these resistors are vertical and horizontal only see how there's some diagonal that's efficiency right um with then that's one of the disadvantages with eyelets now with the circuit boards you can get pretty compact and you can see that there is a height difference so i was able to save some some distance away from the front panel um you can remember i don't know if you remember the we had a notch out to accommodate um the jacks in the front panel and so overall we have this about the same width as we did before but it's going to be a lot more narrow and a lot easier and, and more like the original so that's pretty cool you're going to notice that the power section the power filter board not this that's just not soldered in right now is green versus the black um that's because this was a different circuit board uh spec it's a higher grade spec this is um, two millimeters with a two ounce pour, and that's going to give you sort of the rigidity and the um, continuity that we need for the power filters. So um, there's the previous power filters with a bunch of hot glue in there. Um, this is the new fil the new board, power filter board. Um, these boards are 1.6 millimeters thick with th at least a three millimeter trace width all right so uh, with a one ounce copper pour now some folks will diss circuit boards over you know eyelets and that's fine what i am going to do is make a if i didn't mention this already make accommodations on a new chassis design that will optimize for this pcb as well as the um uh, the eyelets, the existing eyelets. So you have the opportunity to go either direction that you want. So for those who are totally cool with it, and, and I am, I'm absolutely excited for these uh, I, these circuit boards. It will be quicker to populate, and um, in my opinion, it's going to be less nerve-wracking, uh, making sure I got all the traces. Look at all these different traces on the bottom that would normally be individual wires. Now, if you were to flatten like a 22 gauge uh, solder, solder core or um, 22 gauge solid wire, flatten it, I still think that these three millimeter pads is gonna give you more surface area. And remember the, the electrons follow the, they're, they basically flow on the surface, not in the inside of that copper. So you're looking at the diameter of that 22 gauge versus you know, a three millimeter, the top and the bottom of a three millimeter trace, uh, I think we're going to have better continuity, actually. Um, here is the uh, driver board. As you can tell, you know, the layout is a different, is different. Again, it's, it's to optimize to be just like the original steel string singer number two. And, um, you know, that's obviously eyelet optimized. Here's steel string singer number two sort of faithful following. Um, the FET board and the rectifier board are going to have backer plates. So if you look back here, there, there's a bit of a gap and we're not able to get as close as probably I would want to get here and it makes a super tight fit. I mean, this was incredibly tight down here. Um, so having a backer 
plate, just like the original sort of fender design where they sandwiched a backer on here. That's going to make this a lot easier and a lot more room over here. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, if you remember sort of my approach, and I like to over-engineer everything, my original design, there's a lot of uh, metal film, military-grade resistors in here. And that was sort of the modern best practices approach. And I tell you what, this thing is quiet, super quiet. I don't even know that this amp is on. There is no hum, there is no nothing, even with single coils, until I start playing. It's incredible. So I'm not sure what's going to happen next, but I'm choosing the same component type. So where there's carbon film, there's going to be carbon film like that. Where there's metal film, there's going to be metal film. Here's some Sprague uh, cathode bike pass caps. I'm going all in on trying to go with the same component type as the original Steel String Singer. Because I'm curious, you know, there's people out there who say, oh, you know, go carbon film, go carbon, you know, composition in places. Um, I'm just going to go all in, and that's what the secret is for Dumble, is that he had a good ear. So I'm going to try this out and go against my own sort of uh, <laughs> prescription and then try some of this uh, approach, try that approach. I'm excited. I don't even know, like, where to begin so I'm just going to hang up the phone now, put the camera down, and continue on this project. But there's a lot more coming, guys, and I'm pretty excited to share this with you.